works really, really well. We saw that immediately. And by immediately, I mean that after the paint was put away, Joe and I were standing on the corner and watched a car speeding by at about 42 miles an hour. And as it approached that intersection and saw the colors, went err and slowed down and completely just open mouth gaping at what they were seeing um, within an hour. I would say that we, we had the colors down. It was really, really remarkable and that trend <coughs> stayed. So how did the design idea come about? Um, that's probably the most uh, least interesting question to ask an artist because we don't really have an answer. The inspiration came from Joe who said, uh, we would like to get some ideas from people in the neighborhood on what you would like to see and the only requirement is that we want a beechwood tree. And I tried to design something with a beechwood tree and said, this is a, a, an intersection that's somewhat symmetrical and a tree doesn't work. <laughs> so we came up with this and, um, and it happened fast. There were seven days between the time Joe put out the call for design and the day that this was actually painted. <laughs> um, so I, over the weekend, sent a very, very rough sketch. It was literally made with crayons that were on my table that are my kids' art supplies, I think, and sent it over and gave them a few different ideas. They said, looks great, develop this one. We did that. Within 24 hours, I was introduced to Mike, um, and then we did the math and figured it out, and within another day, I was uh, oh wait, then we freaked out about the numbers, right? Because it was something like 42,000 square feet, and we were like, no way. That's huge, right? Um, so... Don't say that to the city. Oh my goodness. It, so we looked at the numbers like four times, and they were right every time we ran them. So then I ordered something like 80 gallons of paint, or 80 buckets of paint, and um, a lot of supplies and put together a plan and that was it really that's all that's all it took <laughs> piece, of cake. piece of cake no this guy's the rock star and the hero and all of this so um, Joe tends to be humble but there were I didn't know until I read the newspaper stories that there were 90 some odd submissions for this and what I've heard over and over again is that this was picked because of the neighborhood involvement and Joe inspired so much of the vital neighborhood um, community there, and it's very, very much appreciated. So thank you, Joe. Great. Uh, I'm gonna turn to Monique. Um, just for a moment, your family is very close to this intersection, and as I understand it, your kids uh, participated in a lot of the activities that day in the makeover of the intersection. And I think one theme that came out throughout the film and throughout a lot of conversations, how much of this is focused on making our community safe for our children, for other people's children, uh, so that they can, um, they can enjoy the, the life in the street um, the way uh, they need to. Um, so what was their reaction to this effort? And all of a sudden, there's just this whole big project going on. Um, and, um, and has it changed kind of what you've seen, how, how kids are um, interacting with, with parts of the neighborhood? And um, yeah, just speak a little bit to that, to their experience with this. Um. Their big reaction to it was, mommy, we're going to paint. <laughs> I think that was like the major thing that they got out of it and being around their friends and partnering with 441 because they're always there and spending all my heart on money to get ice cream. <laughs> but <laughs> they love and adore just the activities that 441 actually bring to them and to be part of it, they felt like part of the community and they're outside like pretty much every day along with other family members and other community members that's around 441 and Greeley Street and including by ourselves. So for them to even have a safe place to be able to be out on a corner and I don't have to actually worry about a car running up on a curb is awesome. Great, thank you. Um, so Veronica, I'll ask you the next question. Um, so one of the, this was a, um, you know, a trial, let's say, that everything was uh, temporary um, there. What message would you like to communicate to the city of Rochester as it 
kind of considers whether or not to make this permanent um, and to you know, perhaps build on, on what was done that day there. What would you like the city to do long term for this intersection? I'd like to keep it. I'd like, to, I'd like them to keep it because it is safe. Um, I think for the city as a whole that a, un a neighborhood can unify and come together with plans and idea and continue to be together and let, let our voices be heard, not only from the perspective of the adults, but the children as well. I think the city needs to hear that everybody that's in a low income area are not crooks, they're not criminals, they don't do drugs, that we are people that would like to live and have our children safe. That's what I would want about Chester City. So, uh, John, I'm going to give you the next question, uh, and then we'll turn to Joe. Um, uh, so, John, you manage uh, the New City Cafe there, right at the intersection uh, that was so helpful that day. Um, and so, I'm, I'm assuming that you've, you've observed a lot <laughs> right outside your doors um, as this uh, project took flight. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess I'm just wondering how the project was received by your customers. I mean, is there a lot, was there a lot of conversation about what happened after, after that weekend? Um, and have you noticed, just through your time around the neighborhood there, has it changed the, the way that cars, pedestrians, bicycles, the different dynamics of how people are using uh, the intersection today? Sure. Um, yeah, definitely there was a lot of conversation, uh, a lot more customers coming in and asking what's going on. And, and so we're able to explain to them, you know, what's happening, how the community, community is coming more together to really support um, a safer you know, intersection and especially as a new business uh, part of 440 ministries um, we want to see more walking customers I mean that's why we open the door for the community to use and yeah her kids come in every day <laughs> and when I used to work there more I, I've changed my role now but um, to see them every day run especially when they're riding their bikes and getting to that corner I'm I lose their I, I lose Josiah once he passes the door and I'm always concerned is he stopping at that corner and because previously we see a lot of people taking that corner very fast so yeah I, I think um, my personal observation has definitely been um, it's definitely helped uh, we do see people I mean if, if, if everything did get raised up I think it would make even a more huge impact um, and as a business we want people to know where to park, mm -hmm. where is a safe place to park, and, mm -hmm. and for our volunteers that come. Um, so as things get established better, and there's actually marked parking spots and things like that, I think it would even make things even more safe. Uh, people know and are aware, and if there's a, a bike lane, possibly, um, we would get even more traffic. So just on the business side of it, it sounds great, you know, we can have more people walk to the coffee shop, which is totally based on community development and training of young people in our neighborhood. So, yeah, I think it's it's been wonderful. I think my experience and all the people that work at 441, um, we we notice a difference and we appreciate the fact that you know we have that this kind of opportunity. So we're very thankful. Thank you. Um, great. Uh, so Joe, uh, you're a leader within the Beachwood Neighborhood Coalition, involved in lots of stuff in the neighborhood, as far as I can tell. And uh, uh, I'm just wondering, sort of, uh, both your impression of how it's been received by the community, and you know, has anybody said like, "Man, that was a really bad thing that we did in this neighborhood"? I mean, is there is has it been universal approval for this, or is there anyone that's saying to you, you know, it, it was really a lot better before we did uh, this project here? Is there is there anyone kind of pushing back, or has it been pretty much a universal? Uh, support for this project yeah I think you know beyond the the traffic coming aspect which is huge and, and big reason why we wanted it um, another big driver for it was the community building aspect so it was a chance for neighbors to come out get to know each other uh, sort of bond with each other a little bit around this project that we all can every time you pass through the intersection you say I did that with my neighbors right so there's something really powerful about that 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 rises above just the traffic calming element. We'll always have that, rather, regardless of whether or not it remains a, an, a permanent fixture in the neighborhood, which we hope it will. Um, so I'd say, by and large, everyone has been very, very excited about it. Uh, 
some people kind of questioned some of the more artsy stuff that we did. Like we had a piano, right? Um, outdoors, the pianos are, are a lot of fun, but they don't hold out too well in the rain. Uh, but we, we knew that going into it, and it's, it's, it's interesting. It's become kind of a piece where kids can still have fun playing on the piano, even though it's out of tune, they don't care so much. Um, but for any piano tuners out there, um, you know, don't uh, accost me in the parking lot or anything like that, I'm sorry. And it's played with constantly, yeah. Um, you know, and then it, for people, anyone else who's raised a concern, you know, it's an opportunity, I wouldn't even say concern, but when people have questions about it, it's a, really an opportunity to educate people. Like, well, why did you, what, what's the point of these curb extensions? Like, what are those really necessary? And we can then educate people on, well, we needed the cars to slow down so when people are crossing the street, they can get in the intersection, not worry about a car flying around the turn. Um, we're, we put this, we realized that this, uh, this boulevard is only gonna be a temporary traffic calming measure, but it's a way to beautify the neighborhood and bring attention to the need for more permanent traffic calming solutions. And it's a way to say, uh, as Veronica said, hey, we're here, we live in this neighborhood, uh, we're people just like you, um, we want you to be aware of that when you come and you pass down our street, right? And for those who do live in the neighborhood, it's a constant reminder of that, like, oh, as I go through this intersection, oh, I remember why this was done and I'm gonna slow down a little bit. And you know, maybe take it in and see if there's somebody that you, that you painted it with is, is walking around the intersection, you know? Say, like, who's around, you know? Because you wanna recognize your neighbors, if there's activity going on, uh, it's, it's a reason for you to stop and spend a little more time there. Great, thank you. Uh, so I'll open this up to the floor. Um, there is uh, obviously a lot of interest in this project from neighborhoods all over the city, um, and elsewhere in the county as well, not just in the city. Um, what advice, what did you guys learn from this process, whether it was the day of stuff or the kind of planning, participation, um, engagement? What did you learn from this process? What advice would you give to, to other neighborhoods as they want, as they try to do something similar or something that, that really meets the needs of, of their particular community and neighborhood? What would be the, the one or two pieces of advice you'd give to, to others? I'll just say real quick to, to think big. And, uh, you know, as is, is, uh, was alluded to earlier, this was kind of just set up as a traffic calming idea pilot, and we really expanded on it and brought in the community art. Again, the piano, uh, we had live music, we had uh, barbecue going, so we brought in all these kind of, we really made it into a block party, and we really kind of pushed the boundaries of uh, maybe what Reconnect Rochester had envisioned for the pilot, and wanted to say, well, hey, if they're willing to do this, what, what can we throw at them and see what sticks, and what can we get in the neighborhood? And of course, from there, we're gonna push the city even harder and try to get, you know, that race intersection, for instance, um, is huge important. So, you know, don't just, don't just look at the, what the city is offering and say like, well, they're offering the Boulevard program, that's all that's allowed. Because before the Boulevard program existed, they didn't allow Boulevard. So we need to keep thinking big and drive and see whatever we can get and, uh, and don't take no for an answer. There wasn't, there wasn't any time to get no's. <laughs> from, from the time they said go, this happened fast, fast, fast. And what you saw, um, uh, and at every moment of the Beachwood neighborhood on the screen up there is what that corner in that community is like almost every day. In the warm months, we have regular neighborhood gatherings and kids are out there every day and the neighbors are sitting on their porch talking to everybody that comes by every day. And so we had this really rich opportunity to bring everyone together and we needed to move really, really fast. I was blown away by how fast it happened and the cooperation of everyone coming together, um, which was great because none of us had time to overthink and question about whether or not it was, I, I remember at some point being like, but what about the rules, Joe? And he was like, rules schmoes, we're just gonna do it. And so we did and we got all the things. So we're gonna just keep doing that. Um, I just wanna add that it just pretty much involved in the community. I think that's where you get that participation and you get more involvement out of the city of Rochester when the community actually can come together and show them that we can put this together and it turns out something like this. So I think as long as we have community, that's where it's, it's gonna start. That's your foundation and from there you just work your way up to the top. 
can I just one last thing? I just want to say the uh, and the, and don't think of the city as your adversaries um, necessarily. I mean, you can push back on them a little bit, but there are allies in the cities that that, that believe in this these things. You, you identify them, and and they'll work with you, and they'll help advocate for you. Um, and so they were really big partners. Um, Nancy John Price at the Neighborhood Service Center was huge at getting the permits through. Mm -hmm. Eric Frisch, transportation specialist, was was key in, in facilitating this project. So i uh, got to give the kudos to the city on that. Um, but we'll, again, we'll continue to push them because we know we can do more. The only thing I'd add is, is what I was experiencing that whole time, it was truly a community building project. I mean, it wasn't the community coming together with one voice and just making a statement, but it was act it actually caused the community to come together even even closer and bonded with people that maybe you wouldn't have uh, otherwise. So I think we, I think on our corner, I mean that, that intersection, we do a lot of that between Joe and 440 Ministries and New City Cafe. We try to promote a lot of that. So when this came into our labs, thanks to Joe and a lot of others, um, I mean, it was just a great opportunity to see real community actually happening. I think when you make it safer, then it'll continue that process. Great. Uh, thank you so much to all of you for um, guiding this process, making this happen. Um, I think you know, it's been said a number of times that this kind of thing can't happen without a group of neighbors and community members really uh, pushing forward and making sure these things um, happen and advocating for themselves and their communities. So um, thank you all both for joining us tonight and giving us this great conversation. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, let's have a round of applause for our And uh, next up, we have Mike Bolger from the Healthy Kids Coalition at Common Ground Health, who's going to give us an introduction to the uh, Drive to Be Better campaign that we saw some commercials for earlier.